Psalm 146. Psalm 146. Praise and trust Him. Amen. Mm -hmm. Praise and trust Him. Psalm 146. Praise you, Lord. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. While I live, I will praise the Lord. I will sing praises unto my God while I have any being. Put not your trust in princesses, mm -hmm. nor in the Son of Man, in whom there is no help. His breath goes forth, he returns to his earth, in that very day his thoughts perish. Happy is he that has the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God, which made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that therein is, which keeps truth forever, which executes judgment for the oppressed, which gives food to the hungry, the Lord looses the prisoners, the Lord opens the eyes of the blind, the Lord raises them that are bowed down, the Lord loves the righteous, the Lord preserves the strangers, He relieves the fatherless and the widow, but the way of the wicked, He turns upside down. The Lord shall reign forever. Even thy God, O Zion, unto all generations, praise you the Lord. Amen. John Calvin, who I'm not a huge fan of personally, said that the most holy service that we can render to God is to be employed in praising His name. Amen. We could say this morning that the intensity of our praise of God is a very good measure of our spirituality. You and I ought to wake up praising God and go to bed praising God. When we're growing in our praise of God, then our praise of God should be Increasing in fervency. We believe in the grace of God. And as we grow older in Christ, we should have an increased understanding of God's grace and the fact that God's grace in us should produce or increase our praise. Amen. It does. We should have a sacrifice of praise that comes from our hearts. Amen. From that innermost part of our being. Jesus said this, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Or out of the abundance of the mouth, the heart speaks. What, is that, what does that tell us? That tells us that whatever fills our heart <laughs> is what flows from our mouth. 
You can tell an awful lot about people by what they say. Have you ever heard somebody say, just go ahead and speak what's on your heart? If we love God, we will find ourselves praising God. Amen. And so the soul or the entirety of our being, when our soul is enthralled with God, we will find ourselves exalting the Lord. Folks, don't be guilty of exalting preachers. Preachers didn't die for you. Jesus Christ died for you. And as we look at Psalm 146 here, we discover that it is a declaration of praise to the Lord, whom the psalmist says reigns forever. Now, in the earlier Psalms, we discover that the psalmist is often lamenting. He's often in a place of affliction, pain, problem. We hear all about his griefs, his shames, his doubts, his fears, his sins, and yes, even his confession of sin. But now, as we approach Psalm 46, and if you read on Psalm 47, 48, or 147, 148, 149 and 150, you would discover that now he finds all of those afflictions and griefs, all of those things now he has put behind him. And now every word is directed at praising the Lord. The Lord's coming back one day, folks. And all we're going to be doing in that day is just praising Him. Amen. All of our afflictions gone. All of our pains and sorrows and grief will be gone. Death will be diminished. We'll find ourselves praising Him. That's what you and I should be aiming for every day of our life. <coughs> to be continually praising the Lord. You know, if you'll just praise the Lord, you'll find your mind will not be on those other things. Just get to praising the Lord. And so, if we take a look, if you read, it, and you ought to do so, the last five songs, you'll discover that the last five psalms are actually a course in worship. It would be a study in worship to examine the last five psalms and not only study them and read them, but heed them and do what they say do. You and I are living in a church age, folks, specifically in our nation, where sanctuaries, sanctuaries are being turned into religious theaters. Say that again. All across this country, Sanctuaries are being turned 
into religious theaters as worship is being more and more defined as entertainment. Mm -hmm. God is not desirous to just be a simple part of our life. He wants to be at the very heart of our lives. God wants to sit on or at the very core of our being. In other words, He wants to be everything to us. Amen. Amen. That's where we have the problem, folks. We want so many other things that sometimes we're guilty of not giving God His rightful place in our lives. That's true. When we need help, not only us, but look, when we need help, when anybody needs help, do you, you think there's anybody in our world today that needs help? Amen. When we need help, it is in that moment that we are confronted with choice. We have two choices. We can run to other people or we can turn to God. Amen. Turn to God. That's the place. The psalmist offers praise to God because he has discovered throughout his life that God is dependable. Amen. You can count on him. Now I've met a lot, I've met a lot of people that are not very dependable, folks. But God is. Amen. You won't believe how many people in the last 14 years have come into this church, get on the bandwagon, and they start promising they're going to do this and they're going to do that. I used to believe them. I used to believe all of them. Now I just say, okay. As we move into this message, I want to define two important words in this song. Praise. Praise is to celebrate. Folks, you and I have something to celebrate. We just celebrated Easter as we celebrated the resurrection of Christ. Listen, you and I can celebrate the resurrection. We ought to celebrate the resurrection of Christ every day because the resurrected Christ lives in us. We have something to celebrate. To celebrate. To glory. To sing. Even to boast. Not in ourselves, but to boast in God. Look at what God has done. Such praise is usually called for in the sanctuary. It's one of the things that we do in our gatherings is we praise the Lord. And then the second word in this psalm we need to be aware of is trust. Trust. To trust is to rely on. Many of you discovered in life yet that sometimes you can't trust people. You said, oh, oh, no kidding. Oh. A lot of the times you can't trust nobody. To rely on. <laughs> to put confidence in. To believe. You and I need to rely on, we need to put our confidence in, and we need to believe God. Amen. 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 If 
somebody knocked on my door today and handed me a half a million dollars, I'd go find a financial counselor somewhere, but I guarantee you I wouldn't trust just anybody out there with that half a million dollars. I want you to leave here this morning with this in mind. As God's people, we need to give Him praise and trust Him. Amen. We need to give God praise and we need to trust God. Somebody said it's easier said than done, preacher. It's hard to praise God when everything's going the wrong way, isn't it? Yeah, that's the truth. But that's the best thing you can do. Exactly. It's hard to trust God when everything around you seems to be falling apart. But what else are you going to do? He'll put it back together. You either trust God or you're going to fall to pieces and go yeah. all to pieces. Trust God, He'll put it back together. The first thing we can glean from this <laughs> psalm is this. Life means praising God. Life means praising God. Every one of us are here this morning because God decided to allow us to continue breathing today. That's right. Amen. Amen. Correct. He gave each of us life and He gives each of us the breath that resides within us. I thank God this morning for giving me another day. Amen. 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 We ought to use the life that He's given us. We ought to use the breath that He's given us to give Him praise. Do, you, do we ever stop and really think about all that God has given to us? Oh, yeah. You've done so much. You can't, you can't pray to And with all that God has given to us, if we ignore that, to ignore Him is to be involved in idolatry. All those other things out there that are more important than God. Praising God is actually a matter of preparing for eternity. Amen. There's a lot of praising going on in heaven, folks. Amen. There's angels that sit around the throne of God all day long, 24-7. Holy, holy, holy Amen. is the Lord God Almighty. There's all kind of praise going on in heaven. Life means praising God. A life of praise will help us to become overcomers. We don't have to wait till we get to heaven, folks, to be overcomers of the world. We can be overcomers of the world in the here and now in this life. Amen. John said, he who believes over, he who's born of God overcomes the world. Man, life is so much easier when you put the world behind you. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Turn it over, Lord. Leave there. Praise Him when you start to get critical. Praise Him when you want to start grumbling and complaining. None of you ever get that way, do you? Yeah, we do. Yeah, always. I'm sure we do. Listen, as God's people, you and I ought to be thankful yes. for all that we have. And we ought to be believing that God is faithful to that promise that He is working all things out for our good. Amen. 
if we love him. You know, one of the reasons that so many people are on medications today? Why so many people are filled with anxiety? Get the Lord out, that's why. You know, praise will free you from constant anxiety. Some folk tore up all the time. They worried about what happened five minutes ago. They worried about what's happened now. Worried about what's going to happen five minutes now. Worried about what's going to happen next week, next month. Or tomorrow, next day, tomorrow. They just live a life of constant anxiety. Praising God will free you from constant anxiety. It will help you in those times that you get discouraged. Amen. Folks, I want you to know, even this preacher has times that he gets discouraged. But the promise has seen me through. What we need to do is to learn how to focus on the Lord rather than focus on the problems. Mm -hmm. Understand that God is bigger than the problem. Amen. That's true. You're sure you're sure. Life means praising God. And as God's people, we are to give Him praise and trust Him. Secondly, this morning, Life means trusting God. Life means trusting God. Now, there are a lot of folk trusting in flesh and blood today. A lot of folk trusting in themselves. A lot of folks trusting in other people. But the Word of God says we are to trust in the Lord. Amen. He will come through. Maybe not the way you want. Now, understand, God can use other people, God can use flesh and blood to accomplish His will on this earth. And if He chooses to help us through other people as He often does, that's fine, but we need to trust Him, not people. Amen. God can do for you and I and He can do through us what nobody else can. Israel's leaders were sometimes guilty of turning to other nations for help. Making alliances with other nations rather than trusting God as they should have. Remember that Exodus generation? They're always wanting to turn back to Egypt for help. Yeah, they're going for 40 years. Instead of trusting the Lord. And what do they end up doing? Going round and round and circle. They ride around in circles. You know how many folk go around in circles today? You placing one's trust in human wisdom is not going to stand the test, folks. To trust in people, to trust in human wisdom is something that is going to eventually die. You know, there are a lot of folks out there that just trusted Barack Obama for eight years. Now they're devastated because he's gone. And some folk are trusted in Trump. And in four years or eight years, Trump's going to be gone. Yeah. And both of them are going to be dead in the grave one day. If you don't come first. Can't last. For all people are going to die someday. You know, I don't know what these young people today who are 
25, 35, 40 years old, they're still living with mom and dad, depending upon mom and dad. I don't know what they're going to do when mom and dad go. Playing lazy. <laughs> fish up. Yeah. World leaders, in, in, you know, even in my lifetime, world leaders have come and gone. Remember that fellow Saddam Hussein? He's come and gone. Now we got one acting up over here in North Korea. Guess what? He's going to be gone one day. Amen. Hallelujah. You're The fact is, as human beings, we're weak. And because we're weak, we fail. And we need the Lord to help us. Will God really help me, you ask? I've done so much wrong. I'm so unworthy. Will God really help me, yes? Remember that fellow in the Old Testament named Jacob? You know what the name Jacob means? Trickster. He was a trickster. He was a deceiver. He was such a deceiver that God decided to give him some of his own medicine one day. <laughs> Jacob was far from a perfect man, yet God honored his faith and he helped Jacob in his times of need. God will not let you down, folks. Man will fail you. Man will let you down. But God, no, never That's right. will He fail you and let you down. You and I can go to Him anytime and present Him with our needs. Amen. Yes. Jesus Christ gave His life on the cross for you. Jehovah God can be trusted to keep His Word, to keep His promise. Amen. Mm -hmm. Life means trusting God. Third, quickly this morning, life means loving God. <laughs> you and I serve a God who is gracious. And at His heart is the needs of needy people whom the Lord loves. We've been studying that on Wednesday nights in our Bible study. He loves the church. He loves the lost world. He loves Israel. And He loves each of us. The greatest proof of God's love is seen on the cross. Romans 5, 8, Paul writes, But God commends His love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Galatians 2.20 I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. I want to say to you this morning that sin is the culprit of every bad condition in this world. That's true. The good news is every sin was dealt with on the cross. Everyone. The fact that they exist is proof that the law of sin and death continues to reign in this world. Let's look back at the works that Jesus did when He was here. He revealed the love of God by what? By helping other people. He ministered to the hungry, to the sick, to the crippled, to the blind. He helped those who were unable to help themselves. That's right. The only reason you and I are able to love God is because He first loved us. Mm -hmm. If we love God, we should love those who need our help. Living in love means more than just enjoying God's love for us. No, it means sharing God.
God love with others. Now, I can't perform any miracles for others. And there's not a one of you in here this morning that can perform a miracle. But there are other ways and other things that we can do in our service for Christ. Life means loving God. Last this morning, quickly, life means reigning with God. Life means reigning with God. The sovereign God of the universe is our heavenly Father. He's our Father. And He is a Lovingly, heavenly Father. He is the God who reigns over all the nations of the world. And so you and I, we're told in the Word of God that we can reign through Jesus Christ by yielding to Him, by walking in the Spirit. Paul says that you and I, if we've been born again, we are seated in heavenly places with God. Do you understand that as a child of God that you have access to the very throne of the universe, to God's throne of grace? We can only reign in life through faith. We can draw on those spiritual resources that we have in Christ. And we don't have to wait for Jesus to come back to begin reigning with us. In Him, you and I can reign with Him today over life. That's what produces a life of praising, trusting, and loving God. That's what produces a life that will glorify God. The best definition I've ever heard of glorifying God is this. Making God look good. Remember one thing in your life. Making God look good. Life means reigning with God. As God's people, you and I should be giving Him praise and trusting Him. In conclusion, let me ask you. Are you living a life that praises God? Are you trusting God today? And are you determined to trust Him tomorrow? Trust Him today. Trust Him tomorrow. Vance Havner said this. We cannot rest in God until we nest in Him. We can't rest in God until we nest in Him. Let me ask you, where are you building your nest? It's springtime, the birds are building their nest. I was on, I was on the golf course last week over here at Rocky Point, this old big tall tree, almost dead, right at the very top it splits. Eagles. Weren't eagles, but I think they were ospreys, two ospreys. And I watched them flying away getting stuff. Mm -hmm. And they were building a nest high up in that tree. Yes. Away from all the tough a place things. of safety. Mm -hmm. A place of rest. Folks, that's where God wants us to be. Amen. He wants us to be nested and nestled under His wings. <laughs> God loves us. He loves everyone. You hear this morning, you don't know Christ. 
as your personal Lord and Savior and you'd like to know Him before you leave here today, I would invite you to come as we sing this closing hymn. By the way, Miss Margie had to leave for a family emergency this morning. Uh, I would just ask you to remember her in uh, prayers like many of us. Uh, she's going through some uh, family battles, so you keep Miss Margie in uh, prayer this morning.